After installing Redshift, we want to enable it when we launch Katana, so let's add it to our launcher script. We have our Katana specific entries, which are explained in the launcher script video, so let's deal with Redshift specifics. When you install Redshift, an example launcher script is available that will allow you to set specifics on launch. This is useful for studio deployment and general use. So let's copy and paste the data and make some adjustments. Let's enter the version of Katana we are using, and then a Redshift version. We want to make sure that the next three entries have the right paths. Now this will vary depending on your OS. In this case, we are on Windows, so we want to be pointing to the install path of Katana, and the version is defined above. Same goes with the Redshift for Katana plugin. We want to point to the correct plugin that corresponds with the version of Katana we are using. We are setting Redshift as the default renderer in this line, and we can add a tagline to the splash screen if we want. We then have some Redshift preferences that we can hard code on launch. Changing the buffer will control the size of the buffer used for items in Katana's image buffer catalog. We can force a cache budget if drive space is an issue. We can set a cache path to a dedicated folder and select a GPU. I'll leave this blank and Redshift will use what's available. We are then referring to our Redshift home and then adding the plugin as a Katana resource. After that, we can go ahead and save. So let's rename the file and change the extension to .bat and then start Katana. We can verify that Redshift is loaded in the console window. And then in the UI, we can press tab and then start typing the name of a Redshift node. So let's explore a scene and have a look at the setup. When we dive into a network material create, we can see the Redshift materials. If you've worked with Redshift before, you'll be familiar with all the material properties. There are many nodes to create for Redshift and you can create a Redshift shading node and turn it into any of the available nodes if you need. You can also filter to find specific nodes. If you are launching Katana with multiple renders enabled, you can switch to the render specific nodes by pressing shift and tab, and then selecting the type of render related to the nodes you want to build. For the lighting in the Gaffer 3 node, you can build out the redshift lights needed, and all the available parameters are available under the material tab. You can of course also build out your lights in the viewer using the artist lighting mode in Katana. Katana's Render Settings node is where we'll set up the render camera, resolution, as well as other settings. We can also set which renderer we'll be using. Since we set up Redshift as the default renderer in our launch script, Redshift is chosen for us. If not, we could set it here. At this point, we can render, as we have our geometry, materials, material assignments, and lights. If we do this, we're not able to make adjustments to the render quality. To make those changes, we would use a Redshift Render Settings node. From here, we have access to all of Redshift's render parameters and can make adjustments. When performing interactive or live renders, we can also use a Redshift Live Render Settings node if we want, and then we can differ from our Render Settings node and make any adjustments for the live render. Lastly, let's look at setting up a few AOVs. We'll create a node called the Redshift Output Channel Define. This node will allow us to set up the channel we want to render as a pass. Let's use the name parameter and call it diffuse and pick the channel from the AOV type. If we have light groups, we can assign which groups you want in the AOV from here as well. Next, let's tell Katana about this by creating Katana's render output define. Let's set the output name to diffuse. The type will be color redshift and we want to make sure we choose the diffuse AOV we created as the channel. From here, we can also set up color space, file type, and compression, and this will change depending on the file type we're writing out to. Now that we have this set up, let's go ahead and render. We can now view our diffuse pass. So I'll go ahead and set this up for some more passes. Instead of setting up these nodes again and again, let's group them, right click, and turn them into a live group. From here, we can write these nodes to disk 
and then call on this setup whenever we want to by creating a live group node, right clicking on it, and then loading the setup. This way we can have a library of different setups, not only for the AOVs, but for many nodes. If we want to add a global AOV from a custom material, we can also set this up in a similar way. Let's set up a global occlusion pass. I'll add another material and create an ambient occlusion node. We'll then create another redshift output channel to find, name it, and for the AOV type, we'll choose custom. This time we'll use the default shader parameter and middle mouse drag the occlusion shader we made from the scene graph into the default shader path. Again, we'll use Katana's output render define, make the output name the same, type is color redshift, and then choose the custom AOV we created from the channel dropdown. Now when we render, we will also have a global AOV that we can use for compositing. That wraps it up, and now you can get going with Katana and Redshift and begin to explore.